For this episode, we decided to do something a little different. We have a guest reviewer, Ben Hall, from Video Game Takeout. So, let's toss it over to Ben over in California. Thanks, guys. In my little corner of the show here, I thought I'd talk about the Bushido Blade series and the ups and downs that that series has gone through. Bushido Blade started way back in 1997 on the original PlayStation, and its focus was to take a more realistic look at the fighting game genre. Unfortunately, while the game is really great, it failed to capture a large audience in the U.S. So let's dive right in and see what made Bushido Blade a game worth remembering. Bushido Blade is a game made by a company called Lightweight and published by Squaresoft. As far as I can tell, Square didn't actually help develop this title at all, but they did work on the sequel. I think Bushido Blade would best be described as a fighting game, but it's not like most other fighting games that you might have played. There are no combo meters, no superpowers, in fact there aren't even any life bars. The reason for this is simple. You don't need any of those because you can kill or be killed in just one well-placed hit. I know it sounds awful, but it's not. It's actually the best part of the game. Rather than mashing buttons or using a ton of projectiles to win, Bushido Blade relies more on the nuance of combat. Since you can die at any second, you need to think carefully before swinging. If you miss, you'll likely be killed before you can get back into position. The game is more of a chess match. You try to get your opponent to commit to something, and then kill them with the counter. You can also try to be very aggressive, but it's not something that will work very often. Not every hit is an instant kill though. Most strikes will hit the sword of the other player. Timing it just right is the key. Another option is to weaken your opponent by hitting his legs or arms. If you hit your opponent in the leg, it won't kill them, but it'll make it so that they're unable to run. And if you hit both legs, then they'll basically have to crawl. The same goes for arms. If you hit one arm, it makes it so that he only has one arm to fight with, which lowers his hit speed and his hit power, but you can't take both arms out. All of these factors play into winning and make it one of the most fun games to play with friends. There's nothing more fun than cutting your friend's leg out from under him and then running around him looking for the perfect moment to go in for the kill. If there's one thing that I think will be difficult for first time players, it's the controls. The game has a very awkward and sometimes frustrating control scheme. There are three stances for high, middle, and low guard. Each stance has its own pros and cons, but it also changes how you swing your sword, which can make it hard to learn all the possible moves. Also, the characters don't automatically line up with one another. I think this was intentional so that there wouldn't be any cheap kills, but it can be frustrating when you first play the game. The graphics in this game are good, but not great, and playing it now, it's definitely dated. But it gets the job done, I guess. The music is really great though and very upbeat which keeps the game interesting when playing single player. One of the strangest things about this game is that it includes a first person mode. It's almost impossible to control and it's not very fun, but since you're never required to play it, I guess it doesn't really matter. In the end, Bushido Blade is a great game and I wish more developers would take a look at it. It did something totally different with the fighting game genre and pulled it off very well. A year later, Square and Lightweight teamed up to make a sequel appropriately titled Bushido Blade 2. Bushido Blade 2 is a much more polished game than the original. The graphics are better and the gameplay is faster, but while it's more polished, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a better game. First, let's look at the gameplay and overall control. The game's speed and control have been greatly improved, and the overall flow of combat is much better. Unfortunately, this takes away some of the strategy of the previous game, since you don't need to be as careful about your strikes. It's not a button masher by any means, but when in close, there are now combos that make killing the opponent much easier. Most of the controls are basically the same as the first game, but there are a few new moves that change things up a bit. The addition I hate the most is the ability to throw items at your opponent. For most of the characters, you start with a dagger or sword, and it can kill you in just one hit from long range. I find this extremely cheap, especially since the dagger is so fast. The second new addition is sort of like a tie-up in wrestling. If you both strike at the same time, it puts you in a button mashing minigame to see who overpowers the other. I actually kind of like this addition because it's infrequent and it doesn't really hurt the game's balance. The normal moves have been pared down a bit, but the ones that are there make killing your enemy a lot more satisfying. However, they remove some of the technical element of the first game. In the end, it's a trade-off, and I think that for most people, the second game will strike a better balance. I can see an argument for both sides, but minus the daggers, I think the second game did it better. 
The music is sparse in the game, and is mostly limited to menus and cutscenes. In-game, it's mostly ambient noise like crickets or flowing water depending on what's around you in the stage. The sound effects are mostly reused from the first game, but there are a few new ones that fit well. The worst part of the sound by far is the voice acting, which is cringe-worthy. Let's take a listen. Are you... really a member of the Shinto? Indeed. Attack me if you dare. The stages have received a graphical upgrade, but it's still not going to blow you away in 2008. The characters also look good, but they're nothing to write home about either. The only change I really dislike is that the game has no blood in it anymore, and instead it's been replaced with sparks that come out of your enemy when you kill them. I don't even really understand this choice since when the game is loading, the screen gets splattered with blood, but whatever. In addition to the missing blood, there are a few other strange things about this game that I don't really understand. First off, the game has an option to be played in black and white. Who was still rocking a black and white TV in 1998, but had a PlayStation? In that same screen, I noticed that the default setting for the AI is hard. Not many games do that anymore. And last, but definitely not least, is the return of the first person mode. Not only is it back, but it supports two player via the link cable, which I just can't understand because it's even worse than the original first person mode. Now you have a wireframe that's all up in your view. I guess it's meant to give you a better perspective on where you are, but it's ridiculous and it's a novelty at best. In the end, Bushido Blade 2 changed the series quite a bit. While it still had the one hit kill system, this game tried to be more mainstream. For better or worse, I think it succeeded and is likely the game that most people think of when remembering the series. In the time since this game was released, Squaresoft and Lightweight had a falling out and decided to end the series at number 2. Lightweight was later bought out by another developer called Genki, who are best known for the Tokyo Highway Battle Games, and together they made sort of a spiritual successor to the Bushido Blade series called Kengo, Master of Bushido for the PlayStation 2. Kengo did away with the one-hit system and added life bars along with a key type system, so it's sort of a departure from the original formula. More Kengo games have been made, but none of the others have made it to the US, so for now Bushido Blade in all forms is dead. And it's really a shame, because Bushido Blade is a game that I would love to see brought into the current generation. It's a solid series, and definitely one worth checking out.